Good morning and a happy 2023 to all of you. We're looking at the Lord's Prayer this morning as preparation for our prayer and fasting, which we do every year next week. All right. But we, before we do that, why don't we lift up this morning and this entire year to the Lord through worship? Next, uh, this morning is Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, which we'll look at the second element of the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What we have come to call the Lord's Prayer was actually the pattern of prayer that Jesus taught the disciples when they asked Him how to pray. And in fact, in the NIV, Jesus introduced the entire prayer by saying, This then is how you should pray. So Jesus was making a contrast against the, the way the hypocrites would pray to show off or the way pagans just mindlessly babble words without really understanding or meaning their prayer. And so Jesus taught them how to pray. And the first step, we talked about it yesterday, is to praise and hallow the holy name of God. The second element in the pattern of prayer that Jesus left us is, again, we pray for His will, His kingdom to be done in our world and in our lives as it is in heaven. And the term God's will in the Greek is called thelema, okay, which Matthew used, which really meant two things. So when we say the will of God in the context of the Lord's Prayer, what we mean are two things. Number one, it's the righteous standard of God. You know, as expressed in the Law of Moses, or as Jesus expanded on it uh, in the Beatitudes. The second, it's two, uh, two meanings really altogether. The second meaning is God's overarching redemptive plan throughout the history of man to bring all nations and all peoples into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In other words, ever since the time of Jesus, God's kingdom has broken into our world. And it continues to spread like yeast until all the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters covers the sea, according to Habakkuk 2.14. And so that's precisely the focus of our prayers when we pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What we're praying for is for God's righteous standards to be established here on earth and for all peoples and all nations to come to the saving knowledge of God, for the knowledge of God to spread uh, and fill the earth. The challenge is, if we are to be entirely honest, a lot of our prayers deal with our requests to God. You know, um, we tend to, a majority of our prayer tends to be about our needs and our wants. Now, that's not necessarily wrong. I mean, uh, Paul said to make our known, our requests known to God in Philippians 4, 6. But that is not the pattern of prayer that Jesus taught us. The pattern of prayer that Jesus taught us is about His will not about our will. And the reason we tend to uh, always uh, delve into our needs, our desires, our wants, is because since the beginning of time, in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve fell and took us all with them, they fell because they chose self-rule over God's rule. In other words, they rejected God's will. They rejected God's righteous standard. They rejected um, His His holiness for their own will. And ever since then, that's been the story of man. Same thing happened at the Tower of Babel. Same thing happened when Israel asked for a king. Same thing happened when empires began to pose as gods themselves. Same thing happened and still happens today when we grab the glory for ourselves that belongs to God alone. In other words, the same is true for all of human history. We reject the rule of God. We reject the will of God for self-rule and self-will. We have repeatedly exchanged the Lordship of God for our own will. 
And that's part of being broken. That's part of being fallen. And so whenever this war between God's will and our will rages in our hearts um, and in our souls, we need to ask ourselves this question. Simple question. Do I believe that God is good? Very simple question again. Do I believe that God is good? Every time our will clashes with the will of God. And several years ago, we did a series here in Victory on, on the attributes of God. We talked about God's glory. We talked about His holiness. Uh, we talked about His... Uh, um, <laughs> I forget the word, but all of His different attributes and characteristics. Um, his greatness and all of that. And then... While studying for that series, it struck, it occurred to me that of all of God's attributes, His goodness is the glue that holds all of His attributes together. What do I mean by that? Because even if it's God, if God is great, even if, it's, if God is glorious, even if He is powerful, even if He is omniscient, if He is not good, that can actually be a fearful thing. To serve a God that's not good, but who's powerful and strong and sovereign, that's a scary thought. But because God is good, that means His judgment is good. That means His wisdom is good. That means His purposes are good. That means His plans are good. That means His will for our lives is good. And therefore, we can trust Him. Therefore, we can surrender our plans to Him. Therefore, we can surrender and place our future in His hands. Goodness is not something that God does. It is something He is. He is inherently good. And the Bible says there is no shadow of turning in Him. And let me close with this thought. Um, as a very young believer, I came across what to this day for me, over 30 years later, is still the best definition of God's will. Uh, again, whenever that war rages in our hearts and our souls between our will and God's will, remember this. God's will, and I, sorry, I can't remember where I read it or who I heard it from, um, but this pastor defined God's will this way. God's will is... If you knew everything God knew, if you were omniscient, if you understood the Alpha to the Omega, what you would choose for yourself is exactly the will of God for you. In other words, the reason that war rages once again between God's will and our will is because we are finite. Our knowledge is limited. We are human. Our perspective is temporal. But if we can see the world and our lives and all of eternity through the eyes of God, what we would choose for ourselves is precisely the will of God. And that is why whenever we pray and fast, that it is not our way of trying to earn God's favor or you know, trying to manipulate Him or trying to wrestle with Him to give us and grant us our needs, our wants, and our desires. What really happens or should happen during prayer and fasting is that we surrender our hearts and our souls to Him so that we can align our lives, our hearts, our minds, and our souls according to His will. Because, precisely because, He is a good God. And His plans, His purposes, and His will for your lives and mine are always, always good. So why don't we close this morning, and again as our way of consecrating the entire year to God with worship. I want to know your love, love that declares it's done. The Lamb that left the throne to heal my heart of stone. For the one who holds the words is after more than words. He wants it all. He wants it all. I know I don't deserve this. Only you make me worthy. So I'll keep reading.
treasures or trophies to compare with your glory so i'll keep reaching over for you i know i don't deserve this only you make me worthy so i'll keep reaching over and over Alright, so just before you go, allow me to speak a word of blessing over you for today, but also for the rest of 2023. Keep joining us every morning as we all dive into God's Word and learn to spend time with Him together as a spiritual family. But let me, uh, let me, let me give you a word of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you and your families. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace for all of 2023. God bless you all. Happy New Year and see you every morning at our morning worship and prayer.